Hello guys, welcome back. Uh, nice to see you again. And um, today I'll talk about uh, new uh, functionality available uh, in TensorFlow and it was announced on a recent uh, Google conference. And this is uh, TensorFlow Decision Forest. And myself, I work a lot with enterprise data, with structured data, and I'm very happy that um, now uh, in TensorFlow we have um, functionality to handle structured data out of the box. Uh, I used to work with XGBoost and um, uh, other Boosted Tree algorithms, and I always thought it would be nice to have this functionality available natively in TensorFlow. So yeah, now uh, we have that. We have this functionality, so this is great. And you know, uh, you could use um, neural networks, deep learning to build models for uh, structured data, but uh, there are certain drawbacks. Like you need to norm normalize data, you need to handle missing values, you need to handle uh, categorical data, and so on. And with decision forest algorithm, all those uh, things are handled automatically uh, by the machine, by algorithm. And you can focus on uh, on the data, and you could focus on building uh, or extracting new attributes out of the existing data to help model to identify the patterns uh, better. So today I prepared a small uh, sample just to give a try uh, and see how decision forest algorithm works. I'll show it to you in a second. And also I should mention that at this moment um, TensorFlow Decision Forest run on Linux environment and uh, they don't run yet on, uh, this algorithm doesn't run yet on either Windows or Mac OS, but hopefully uh, it will be fixed soon. But in any case, if you, you could always uh, wrap um, uh, Decision Forest into Docker uh, container with Linux and run it on uh, any environment. In my, in my demo today, I'll be using Google Colab. Okay, so let's switch to uh, my desktop machine. And first of all, uh, this is the uh, homepage uh, for TensorFlow Decision Forest. And if you go to guides and tutorials section, this uh, migrate from neural networks uh, section, which explains uh, uh, all the things that you should be aware of uh, if you're building um, models for structured data with neural networks. And now you would like to use Decision Forest. So such thing as uh, you don't need to have validation data when you train the model. There are way less hyperparameters uh, to set when training the model. And um, for example, if you have numeric data, you don't need to normalize uh, data to bring back to the same scale because uh, this will be handled by the algorithm out of the box. Another thing, uh, when you have uh, categorical data uh, like names or other strings, you don't need to uh, one hot encode this data to convert it to a sequence of numbers like zero and one. Uh, this functionality will be handled as well out of the box. So you should go through this article to understand uh, uh, how great uh, decision for us for structured data. Right, and okay, what's the difference between structured data and unstructured data? So usually structured data is comes in the form of a table. There are certain attributes or columns, and uh, these columns are related between each other. So there's some sense. And with unstructured data, uh, you would have columns that represent some numbers, uh, but there's no much dependency between them. And it could be like pixels, uh, in, if you talk about picture, or it could be uh, some numbers that um, <clears throat> describe the words, if you talk about the text and so on. So this is unstructured data. So with structured data, uh, usually you would have a table and data would be able, you would be able to identify some patterns, some dependencies across columns to be, to produce classification results, regression or ranking. Okay, so let's jump into the Google Colab, and I prepared this example using Decision Forest uh, running on top of Titanic dataset that I took from Kaggle, and I put this dataset on my own GitHub uh, repo in order to uh, to load the dataset easier into the Colab session. Otherwise, I would need to upload the file into the temporary directory and so on. Instead, instead of that, I just uh, reading the data directly from from URL. So first step, we need to install uh, Decision Forest uh, library into this session. 
and as it works on Linux and Google Colab runs on Linux machine, so it works well here. It installs and then we install some helper utility to display uh, logs uh, in more user-friendly way in, in Colab session. We do import, so we import TensorFlow Decision Forest library and additional uh, utilities. Okay, then we execute some hidden code to improve uh, log layout in Google Colab and we print out the version of TensorFlow Decision Forest and it's 0 0.1.7, the current version. Then we load um, data from uh, my GitHub uh, repo, uh, which I took from uh, Kaggle. This is a train and test data set. And we don't need to have validation data set uh, with Decision Forest because when model trains, it's enough to have a training set uh, from where patterns will be identified. Then we print out uh, information about train data set. So there are 891 rows. And this is how the data looks like. Uh, we'll do uh, uh, just a bit of um, data pre-processing. Uh, obviously, there are, um, uh, if you would like to achieve the, great, uh, the better model uh, accuracy, you would uh, do even more pre-processing. You would generate additional attributes to help model to identify patterns better. But our exercise here just to test how decision forest algorithm works, and um, we don't uh, have the goal to build the, the best model possible. So we would just uh, drop passenger ID column because we don't need that. And we would uh, extract uh, deck information from a uh, cabin uh, uh, value. And so that we would have information about the, the passenger on which uh, deck the passenger was located, uh, his, his room. Uh, another thing we would extract title information from name. And this would give us uh, such uh, info as uh, the person is uh, male, female, younger person or older person. And then we drop um, ticket uh, column because uh, ticket uh, comes with unique value and we don't need that. And this is how the training data set would look like, uh, which we will use for training. Uh, we see that uh, numeric uh, features are not normalized and this is fine because algorithm would take care for that automatically. And there are uh, uh, features like sex and um, uh, embarked, which are uh, <clears throat> categorical. And we don't need to translate these features into the arrays of numbers because this also will be handled automatically. We construct TensorFlow dataset out of Pandas dataset and, uh, uh, data frame, and we specify the target attribute or label, uh, which will be used during training to um, run classification tasks. Right, and we don't need to, <clears throat> we don't need to um, provide uh, our target attribute as a separate attribute on a, in a training function because it's already this information is already set in, in uh, this data set. Okay, then we run uh, training and we don't need to uh, specify number of epochs or um, uh, batches uh, for the training uh, differently than uh, when we train a neural network because in this case, algorithm would automatically identify how many epochs are required to build the model based on data set. <clears throat> so we train the model, model trains, and we achieve 84% accuracy. And another thing to say uh, with Decision Forest or uh, other uh, boost tree algorithms is that uh, it, you may retrain model as many times as you want. If data doesn't change, you would always get the, uh, the same result. And this is great because uh, you could reproduce the results of the training uh, the other time if the data set remains the same. <clears throat> to test the model, we uh, run predict function and to make sure that the model was trained successfully and it could produce the results. And for example, we see for a person, uh, uh, for this person, uh, model returns almost 60% uh, probability that this person will survive. And if we print out the test data set, we see that uh, this person uh, under position number five is a female, 22 years old, and probably model learned uh, some patterns during training that uh, um, Females, younger females female have a higher chance uh, to survive. OK, 
here we can save the model like any other uh, Keras model and we're going to use this model for serving. It's a standard uh, Keras format. Nice thing, we could print out um, uh, information about the model structure when it, when it was built and we could understand which uh, features are more important than others and how a uh, model calculates the result uh, based on which features, the uh, way it looks first and the way it look, looks next. This is a great way to explain the model and to understand uh, how the calculations are done. We could print out model summary. Uh, we could uh, get the information uh, about the features, which, uh, which, which of them are more important, which of them are less. We could uh, display evaluation and uh, we could display uh, the final accuracy that was uh, achieved during model training. And finally, we could also uh, display visually a chart and, and, and show how the training was done. We see that accuracy is increasing and loss uh, is decreasing, and this means uh, training runs well, there's no overfitting. And if you go back to the TensorFlow Decision Forest page, uh, over there, there are three tutorials. And the third tutorial explains in very detail how to do debugging and audit of the model which was trained. And if you do some actual job with Decision Forest, I believe uh, you should uh, go there and check uh, uh, additional uh, explanations. Okay, so thanks for watching and uh, hopefully this was useful, especially uh, if you're looking to build machine learning model for structured data, because I believe TensorFlow Decision Forest is great for that. So thanks and see you next time. Bye.